Yes, welcome back, Medion Challenge Cup Grand Finals. Metis and Brokenshard bringing you the game here between CLGU and Moscow Five. And I have to throw it right over to you, Ram. How are you feeling about this game? Of course, Moscow Five cannot afford to slip up another time. If CLG win this matchup, they'll be taking the crown. You just called me Ram. I don't think people know me by that name just yet. Oh, that's his name. That's his actual name. Sorry, Brokenshard. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 it's no problem. Uh... I'm curious to see if uh, CLG is going to abuse the fact that they have Alistair. Alistair is by, by renowned one of the best level 1 fighters. On the plus side, though, Alex's uh, gold card, Darian's counter-strike, Tarek's actual uh, dazzle, is going to give them another advantage because if Screpo mispositions himself and CLG kind of rush in too quickly, they can possibly be eating a chain of 3 stuns and a lot of damage. But it doesn't look like any team is interested in level 1 fights, which is boring, boring. <laughs> They're just going to fan out and defend. Mundo uh, can pretty much start anywhere. He can either start between red and blue and not be affected too much. Nocturne, on the other hand, it seems that Diamond will start blue. Though I, f I feel that if he starts red and then makes his way top, he might be able to gank Wicked when Wicked will start pushing. Because early on, Wicked will have to push it if he wants to harass the um, Jax. By using his W, he'll do AoE damage. His E will do AoE damage. So I'm really expecting uh, Wicked to be pushing a little bit early on. Well, we got a lot of messages, um, me personally, I know Bastard as well, people were quite bored with that first game, they're saying, oh, CLG, it's a, it's a snooze fest. The thing is, I mean, they do definitely set up for that poke kind of mentality to go further and further ahead and just basically snowball it, but very slow, very steady, very much a, a mechanized approach from them. But you have to say, it's super effective. At the end of the day, they're beating teams like Moscow 5, they're currently 2-0 up in this grand final, you can't really knock them for that. Obviously, from a spectatorial viewpoint, it's not the greatest to watch, but it's now down to Moscow 5 to try and pull this one back out the jaws of defeat. It's all about tryharding. Teams that really try hard sometimes tend to not want to make reckless mistakes because making one reckless mistake that late in the game, as we've said before over and over again, it could cost them the game. CLG felt comfortable in the seat of power they were in. They were not particularly scared of anything that uh, Moscow 5 could do, especially since Genji's uh, attack damage wasn't exactly the strongest. They were able to kite him for long, long periods of time in that team fight, keep him away for the important people like Yellow Pete and Anivia. Uh, Wicked doing a fantastic job, but uh, keeping the game kind of going on slow is something that CLG NA is very popular at doing. And uh, I'm very, I'm very, very impressed to see CLG EU adopt the playstyle from their uh, mirror team on NA. And as I said, yeah, Wicked is slowly, slowly but surely pushing top lane with his E. Trying to get a little bit of harass on Darien. Uh, early on, Darien is actually going to have a slight advantage on Wicked. But once Wicked can pick up the items, like a Glacial Shroud, Fellow Stone, be able to spam his spells, it, it's going to turn into the advantage. Now we see Snoopy first jungler in top lane, level 3 with double. And here he comes. He is me trying to pick up this kill. Counter Strike has been propped off there from Darien. He does land on both Snoopy and Wicked as well. And using that flash afterwards to secure himself back to the tower. So the damage has still been done from Snoopy. Didn't pick up the kill, but did burn a summoner spell. I start. Here's Diamond. Snoopy there, half HP. His exhaust is up. The Diamond will go back. Wicked does not seem to be running Ignite fairly often on top lane. He likes his heal. He likes to be defensive. Snoopy kind of guessed that Diamond would have been done with his red and would have started coming up back towards top. So he was kind of pacing himself back and forth around the area. Just making sure that Wicked would not be ganked as he pushed the tower. And uh, Darien is going to lose a couple of CS here, just because of the tower's mechanics. Alrighty, well uh, let's have a quick look at bot lane. It's going to be Yellow Pete, who just gets stunned off there from Tarek, but Corky was more preoccupied with securing a couple creep score there. So uh, I'm not going to be jumping on top of Yellow Pete. But yeah, it's going to be Sivir and Alistair facing off against Tarek and Corky. And which of those two compositions would you be favouring here at bot lane? Uh, definitely Sivir's going to be able to uh, neglect any sort of hard engage because once Tarek comes up and tries to dazzle her, she'll be able to spell shield. And then later later in towards this matchup, he's also going to be able to run away using uh, not only Alistair's CC, but uh, her ultimate and her flash as well. The cleanse is also protect her if there is a stun that magically is able to go through her spell shield. On another, on another plus side, if Alistair's able to single out Corky, stun him, CC him away from a group of creeps. Sivir will open up with a combo. An auto hit uh, ricochet, which is her W, which is a, now an auto attack modifier for people who don't know the new Sivir, uh, Sivir changes that happened quite a while ago. And her Q, which after like rank, uh, at rank 5, it actually does one of the most damages in the game for a non-ultimate uh, ability. 
Malphite, uh, sorry, Al uh, Malachi's sapling is, uh, I believe, a little bit more damage if you count both instances. Looks like Darien disconnected though, which is uh, really, really depressing to see. Yeah, but he has instantly reconnected, so uh, let's hope there's nothing too serious there for him. We have had a couple problems in the past in the Corsair Vengeance Cup. Noticeably enough, it was Moscow 4, or M4, doing the business against SK after Gosu Pepper actually disconnected. So, a couple of issues there. But uh, fingers crossed that's not going to continue to be a problem throughout this. Wicked does have the slight advantage. Just hit level 5. Darren is going to be going to him as here comes Nocturne from the side as well. Unspeakable Horror is going to be popped off. Are we going to see a flash utilized from Wicked? Maybe not because here comes Snoopy on the Mundo. Stops himself just before coming around that corner. But they're going to go back in once again. And Wicked trading blows with Darren, perhaps trying to bait out here for Mundo to get in contention. Here they go. We are going to have another engage kicking off as Diamond Prox with that fear is going to be running backwards. Burning Agony is up from Snoopy. Nice stun though with a counter strike from Darien. And they will both pull back to safety on the tower. Oh, Darien disconnects. Yes, mm. get again. Uh, I feel that if uh, Snoopy would have exhausted, that would have been a free kill on them. Though uh, I didn't seem like Darien was disconnecting in that particular chase so they wouldn't know if he was disconnecting so I'm not gonna call scumbag anybody but um definitely he had burnt his flash prior to the uh prior to the uh whole engage there but you know diamond prox mix missing his Q actually makes a big difference because that Q is a huge steroid for Nocturne it gives you 35 attack damage and move speed not only that it's also quite a strong nuke early game I mean yeah Wicked has armor but you know you're already gonna deal quite low damage to high armored person because he only has yeah, he actually doesn't have any arm pen at all. Uh, maybe running some attack damage or attack speed. So being able to land that Q is a huge part of Nocturne's early game damage output and late game in fact. Because at rank uh, at rank five, it'll give you 55 extra bonus damage. I'm uh, sorry, 45. Excuse me. So we are going to have Undo picking up the blue. I'm actually giving it to Froggen, of course, using the Sadism just to give himself some nice health regen. Uh, so he's not going to end up dying that. So Froggen has picked up the blue. Two players are also going to be congregating around the blue from the opposite team, of course, Alex and also Diamond. Alex will be picking up the uh, the buff there and going back to mid. So pretty much mirror images again. No early first blood kicking off here and very much even around the map. Although you have to say that right now Moscow 5 have been getting their mechanics down. They're currently 500 gold ahead without a first blood. Uh... No, there's there's no kills on the map, no no objectives that would uh, sort of point in the direction of an actual kill in anybody or any advantage. It just seems like Moscow 5 are just happily out CSing the members of CLG. I mean, Darien is obviously losing out on this, but uh, Sivir 52 to... No, I mean... Yeah, I mean, yeah. Corky 68 to 53. Uh, TF and Kog'Maw are pretty much dead even. So, I'm not sure how... The only explanation that I can give is probably this TF passive, which uh, at the moment, TF has managed to pick up 132 extra gold, Darien with um, 88, Nocturne with so-and-so, and you know, the, the combination is probably accounting to a portion of the gold increase. Yeah, definitely. TF's passive coming in good here. So, you're going to have a, a slight difference opening up between the two teams. Uh, the two top players are just going to keep butting heads, knocking each other backwards and forwards. Wicked still does have that level advantage though, using the smash on the floor, the ground slam, to do some nice damage to Darren, who is going to be pulling himself back. Mundo, in the meantime, has opted to take this opportunity to push up towards that top player, and we have seen this a couple times already, going into that top row. So maybe again, Wicked is going to hope that Darren plays a bit too aggressive. Nice ultimate coming in though, the unstoppable force onto Darren. Will the counter-strike save him? Beautiful stun coming in, and the flash as well. Here comes Mundo, the Sadism pop, but he's actually going to get taken out from Nocturne underneath that tower with the unspeakable horror. Twisted Fate Ultimate comes down as well. Gold's card will land, and that's going to be the first blood and there is, of Twisted Fate. There is the diamond prox I know and love. That is, he, he was right place, right time, dived up on Snoopy. Snoopy had the right intentions and was trying to pick up that kill. He was literally just a cleaver away. Diamond Prox just way too fast for him, managed to jump on him. Good communication for Moscow 5, it was definitely called on TeamSpeaker Skype or whatever they're using that TF was closing in the distance and he managed to come in. But now we see Froggen coming in here. Yeah, Froggen is coming up towards top lane, gonna try and answer the call of his fallen teammate, but that's not gonna end up happening. Yeah, great job from Alex trying to zone uh, Malphite away, manages to yeah. gold card in. 
that's what TF is really good. He's really good at pulling back and pushing forward. He can really change his mind instantly because he has his abilities that are both defensive and offensive. That's one thing I really like about Twisted Fate. It, it also it's also like a Nivea in the sense that both all abilities can be used offensively and defensively. Oh, on Darren. The situation. Darren is getting harassed heavily in mid. Can Frog and land another ultimate? No, he can't. Leave Strike used onto one of his minions and he will manage to escape. But just going back to what we said in a champion select uh, Broken Shard, that the global influence right now for Moscow 5, very, very strong. It's exactly what we saw there. Turned out to be a 3v2 at top lane. Fairly sure that Wicked alongside uh, Mundo felt that that kill was up for theirs. Here we go. In the meantime, though, Dragon's actually going to be getting taken from CLG. Now going to start to pull themselves back. The Ooze goes down from Froggen, and uh, nothing too much is going to come out of that exchange. Good stand from Ghost, who keeps the dragon hitting on Snoopy. Snoopy, with no real form of sustain out of his ultimate, is going to take damage from that dragon, absolutely. And it was a really bad placement for CLG, uh, sorry, for Moscow 5, because Nocturne was out of mana, kind of low in HP, no cooldown. Starion was low mana, low HP. He still kind of is, but I, I see, I think we see like an impromptu lane switch happening here. Wicked, I'm uh, sorry, Wicked facing uh, Alex on top and Bro Froggen facing uh, Darian in mid. Is this going to go forever? I'm not sure. I'm not really uh, too confident in uh, Darian's ability to be able to kill or do much against uh, Froggen. I think he's got a better chance top lane, in my opinion. And uh, having Alex top lane also hinders his ability to roam around the map using that ultimate to the advantage. At this point, he can really only comfortably get to mid lane, whereas if he's in mid lane, he can get to both lanes and inside the jungle without much issue. Yeah, so Darian is going to be recalling. Uh, as will Alex, so maybe going to re-rotate again. Looks likely Alex running towards that mid. And yeah, Darian will be going back up towards top. Fairly sure about that one. In the meantime, Diamond is going to take this opportunity to pick himself up some creep farm in mid. And actually going to have both of the Moscow 5 duo pulling back towards mid lane. So maybe they're going to try and make something happen here onto Froggen. Nocturne has decided to start going in the opposition jungle. Gonna Looks like it's going to be a dragon. Yeah, that was a dragon. very defensive board, but he's going to meet Snoopy face on. Yes. So I see a lot of junglers differ on what to max. Some people max out E. Snoopy um, decided to max out his Q. It's, it's a lot of different opinions. E will give you a huge steroid early on, but that Q, with, especially with the magic penetration and offense. Well, uh, just before we go on, that was a great steal. Great job. That's like old Moscow 5 classic uh, steal yeah. the blue. They do it so often with Iman. He's so, so aggressive in that counter-jungling role. Now that dragon has been opened up for them, and they should be getting this one completely free, because it doesn't seem that you know CLG with Malphite at top plane can't really afford to engage in a 4v5 in this situation. So that is going to be the dragon going to Moscow 5, and they edge ahead by 2.2k gold. That's the dragon TF. <laughs> Passive. Mm, I, I don't really see many people out CSing. In fact, uh, CLG might actually be out CSing Moscow 5 at this point. Uh, aside from mid lane is losing by about 7 CS, but oh, I, I'm completely wrong. Corky's ahead 20 CS to Sivir. They're uh, totally winning out in total mechanics. And Nocturne, surprisingly, out farming a Mundo. I mean, Mundo is, is actually the fastest jungler in the game. No one beats a Mundo in terms of raw speed. Uh, but we see now an Oracles on uh, Snoopy definitely wanting to pick up map control. It'll help him uh, decipher where Diamond Prox is going to approach lanes from with his ultimate. We kind of see some kind of a aggression in mid lane, but uh, really good job Froggen knowing his champion. He's using the Void Ooze to his advantage. We're going to have an engage at top lane here as uh, Nocturne will be flying in with that paranoia. And the unspeakable horror return. Fire though coming in from Malphite. Very nearly finishing off the Nocturne. Ignite ticking down. Last oh, attack wow. will finish him off from Alex. Alex is now hungry for this second kill. Going to come back in once again with that red buff. Is Wicked going to go down? Yes, he will. Flash was used from Al Alex just to secure the kill. Wasn't needed in the end. But that was a split decision. And uh, that's going to be 3 for 0 coming up. Beautiful gank once not again at that, top lane. Not only that, an Oracles was wasted. Uh, Snoopy yeah. wasn't really able to do much with his Oracles. He was kind of around this bottom area, maybe took out a ward or two, but then he lost that. Diamond Prox using his spell shield to block the higher damaging uh, da spell of Wicked, which was his E. He managed to block the E and then flashed away. He took only uh, a rank 3 Q. Wicked doesn't really have Jig Pan. He decided to go for flat AD in his runes, maybe to last hit better. So, um... Yeah, very good play from both Alex and Diamond Prox in that end situation. On the other hand, Snoopy was just, it was really just a silver baby that kept them from dying. Once Alex picked up that red buff, it was really difficult for Wicked to get out of that situation. So, we are going to have some uh, 
some more. It's, it's just the tug of war bot lane. Nothing's really going down. Just a creep farm fast at the moment. You're going to have Corky 136, so looking pretty good for him. Civ 113, so Yellow Pete's starting to fall behind. We do know that Genja loves to play that Corky, also loves to take Trinity Force on him, and he currently has that fade. So definitely looking to go the same route here. What's Civ here been building up? Well, she has a Berserker's Greaves and two Doran's Blades with a Vampire Acceptor. So she is uh, slightly behind in terms of that tank ability right now but she is just going to be spamming away with that boomerang blade but nothing to really report right now after that huge amount of uh, action at top lane kind of subsided gone back to the farming phase and it's going to be interesting to see how these two teams come out fighting wicked deciding to uh, sorry wicked deciding to uh, sorry oh wow i just made that mistake twice uh darian decided to go top now after picking up some items he's got a pickaxe and a vamp scepter so we're probably going to see an early bilge water cut left instead of the usual triforce rush that's uh more common to see wicked Oh my god, what's wrong with me? Alex Itch, building a Lich Bane after the Merc Threads. This actually puts him at 100 magic resist, which makes him quite tanky against the Kog'Maw's Burst. We've seen Alex do this build every single game so far, but now Frog in with a Blasting Wand, most likely going to be aiming for that Rylai Scepter of, uh, for the HP, and um, slow on Spellcast. Alright, so, uh, sorry, I just got a bit of a lag spike there, so I wasn't ignoring you, dude, I just uh, was waiting for it to subside. We do have a couple items getting built up. You are going to have uh, Corky going back, taking that zeal. On top of things, Berserker's Grease, of course, the Riggles Lantern was finished off briskly from Nocturne. A Lich Bane finished from Twisted Fate already with Sork Shoes and two Doran's Rings, so he's going to be doing a lot of nice damage 17 minutes through this matchup. And Fogger needs to be careful because Alex is coming round the side, but uh, instead... He's just going to take down those creeps, but Darien is lurking in the shadows. He is going to be jumping over towards Snoopy. There was a ward down, and uh, enough to push Dr. Mundo back just for now. Dragon should be spawning very shortly, within the next minute and a half or so. Diamond going for Zerker Greaves this game. Uh, personally, I find the Zerker Greaves into Aegis build very effective, because the Berserker's Greaves gives you so much extra damage through attack speed. Because once you land that Q, you're going to get all the AD you really need. In the meantime, Wicked is top, so they might be planning a blue steal, which they know is coming up soon. And immediately after blue, Dragon should come about a minute and a half after, since blue is respawning in five minutes, Dragon in six. Top lane will definitely go down, Snoop A is top, they know that he's top. So, uh, I don't know, maybe this is a bit of a premature move from Darien to come down so early when Dragon wasn't even spawning. I think well, maybe he's trying to set up the gank here because Twisted Fate's popped off the ultimate. Jax from the side as well. This should be two dead players. They're going to be focusing onto Alistair. Unbreakable will have been popped off. Going to make him a very tanky bull for a few seconds. But he should be going down regardless. In amongst all of that, Jax is going to finish off the Ziv here. And yes, indeed, uh, Alistair will be taken out of the equation from Twisted Fate. So 5 for 0. We did call out at the beginning. This game would be much thicker faster paced action than the previous one and it has definitely lived up to hype Moscow 5 are looking at a different class this time yeah I mean Diane Prox didn't even have to ult it was very smart of them for let, to let um, Darian go for the um, Sivir alone I'm pretty sure it was called out I can take the Sivir alone you guys can get the Alistair because after Alistair had the ult he had the flash but then he managed to take a phage proc which is very lucky for Genji to get off on there and yeah, Kogma definitely uh, feeling very powerful right now, level 13 with a Rylai Scepter. He's going to really hurt already with his uh, spell penetration and uh, 100 AP. And at the same time, he's going to be able to kite phenomenally well. Looks like CLG Steam Comp of uh, Poke and, Inish and, uh, Poke and uh, Disengage is not really working out for them for the better. Yeah, and it's difficult because obviously you've got Nocturne and Twisted Fate that can go pretty much wherever they want in those team fights. They can ultimate onto you, Twisted Fate can get around the back in bushes and such and kind of catch you off guard. So that kind of poke and, and harassment may not pay off as well as the previous game. Dragon has respawned and Moscow 5 are going to be right there to try and pick this one up. Cogmore firing off a few ultimates. He's going to have total vision of the team fight if it does kick off. Unspeakable Horror I think was used from Diamond on to Malphite. Gold card does come in. In the meantime, Genji's taking a lot of damage there from Alistair and Sivir. The ultimate has been popped. They're going to be on the hunt here, but will they pick up any kills for their troubles? Doesn't look likely as Sivir will be going down from Genja. In amongst all of that, could be a kill going back onto Gosu Pepper, but that would not be a good exchange. Genja trying his best to pull himself back out of this uh, threat from Alistair chasing after him. 
Will he get taken down from these towers? Answer is a resounding no. Will he be able to escape? Not too sure. Twisted Fate has popped off the ulti. So Destiny could come to the rescue of Corky, but it's not looking likely. More than uh, probable, he's just going to go and sacrifice on the tower and give nobody this kill. So nice play from Genja in the end there. There you go. Execute it to rub salt into the wounds of CLG, who are currently 6-0 behind. Yeah, it was a great job from uh, Moscow 5 really being able to take out Yellow Peep there. Of course, uh, Ghost of Pepper, who died in Team Fight? Did the first death? Severe. No, no one Yellow died. They didn't, they didn't lose anybody, excuse me. Yeah, just they only Yellow Peep was Sorry, they, only, they, only, they lost uh, Genja to a turret, but that's not really important. They were able to waste a lot of time chasing him. Alex used the Destiny to get Kogma, who was left alone, but then Kogma was forced to cleanse and flash over the wall. So really good job by Alex using one ultimate for two summoners. Very good trade. And at the same time, Genja forcing them to run away instead of uh, sort of try to pick up the scraps of a, a kind of weakened Moscow 5 at the end of that team fight. Now Darian's got his Hextech Gunblade. And I'll tell you why he got this Hextech Gunblade. Generally, when you get a Triforce, you're not expected to chase as much because you may have that little move speed, but it's meant for uh, burst damage. And uh, you kind of want to just jump in and stuff. But when you want to hard engage someone, you need that definite slow. Darian can jump on someone, proc the um, Hextech Gunblade, activate, and keep anyone in the vicinity for a long time. So he can just unload on them absolutely phenomenal damage. Uh, and survivability, because he's got so much damage that will turn into lifesteal and spell vamp. Also, Ghost of Pepper picked up a Zeke's Herald, and that's going to help everybody on this team will benefit from a Zeke's Herald. Ooh, that's a that's a very early Zeke solid actually. I haven't seen it that early for a while, and as, as you say, I mean, it's, it's definitely going to give Moscow Five a nice little buffer. As that uh, Genja will be taking down this bottom creep wave, and we are going to see uh, three players from Moscow Five in mid on top of that. So Froggen and Snoopy going to have to try and hold off this onslaught. Counter Strike has been used there from Jax. Here comes Al uh, Twisted Fate actually with the flash onto Froggen. They're going to finish that one up nicely. Doctor Mundo has an ignite down on him. The ultimate comes out from. Twisted Fate on top of that, so they're going to have Vision. Now Twisted Fate's going to be trying his best to escape and very nearly gets caught out from the headbutt. 1-2 combination from the Alistair, just managing to teleport away in time. Very quick reactions from Alex, so they get another pick and manage to pull themselves back. So that's going to be 7-0. Yeah, and meanwhile up lane, Genja was really pushing them out, keeping Yellow Pete under turret, even harassing him under turret. Now with Triforce complete. He's not only moving very fast, but he does a tremendous amount of damage. And Moscow 5 being on top of this blue buff ever since it's respawned for the second time. This is just absolutely phenomenal play from them, being able to keep this away from Froggen, who I wouldn't say desperately needs this blue buff. It's, it would have helped him so much to be able to stack up that tier. Right now it's 596. With the blue buff, he might have been able to get 700-800, which actually would be a big deal for him. Just a complete difference in pace from Diamond Prox this game, though. I mean, last game, we didn't see him count the jungle more than once, I'd have to say, in the entirety of the game. This time, he's always there. As you said, it's classic Moscow 5. Maybe that's down to the fact they've got a Twisted Fate this time and not a Malphite in mid with Alex. I'm not too sure, but he feels much more confident roaming around the opposition jungle and really being a thorn and a pain in the backside of CLG. And it's working to, to beautiful uh, results right now. They're 8k ahead after 23 minutes it's 40, three towers to one, and they're bossing this game. Yeah, we're, we're seeing some really um, some really good play from Moscow 5. TF going for a uh, Hextech Revolver. This actually could be uh, either Will of the Ancients or a Gunblade. I've actually seen APTFs go Gunblade. Actually, I've seen it very common in uh, some solo queue games where TF will go Gunblade with uh, Death, uh, Death Fire's Grasp for the quite strong active burst. It, it, it's actually not that bad of an item for him. It's actually quite effective if people get near. Though, most likely this will be a Will of the Ancients. This will help out Genja's uh, magic damage and um, Diandarian's magic damage. It will allow him to spell vamp quite a tremendous amount of damage. At the same time, though, Diamond, Prox, Alex, and Ghost, who are all doing the uh, Baron, Genja's keeping uh, Froggen busy and uh, Darian keeping Wicked and Snoopy busy. Wicked, no mana, very low mana, and very low HP. Darian doing a great job jumping on Snoopy there. He's just being the diversion right now for CLG. They, they can't really push around to this Baron without 
risking dying, but here comes Snoopy actually with the sadism, could potentially get round with that smite and steal it. In the meantime, Darwin will be jumping over. In fact, maybe headbutted away from Alistair, didn't quite catch that. Baron has gone down, here comes the Nocturne ultimate. Twisted Fate 2 with the Destiny. Are they going to be engaging onto anybody right now? Cogmore forced to flash away. And as he was coming under heavy attack from Corky, and they are going to be chasing CLG back. So that 7 0 with a Baron buff on top of everything else for Moscow, uh, Moscow 5. And you have to say, you know, Darwin did such a phenomenal job there, creating a yeah. diversion and forcing uh, CLG back. Genja and Darian just being absolute bullies. While Darian was bullying Mundo, Alistair, and uh, Malphite, Genja was sort of pushing the Sivir back under turret. Sivir was not able to join them in that fight, and a very early Baron for Moscow 5. Now 7-0 ahead, 11k gold advantage. Now at this point in the game, Baron is everything. It's so difficult to stop a push from a team with Baron buff because now they pretty much have access to every single objective on the map, be that Dragon, be that your buffs, which Moscow 5 already had. It's going to be really difficult for CLG to collect these objectives and sort of try to come back. If Moscow 5 are going to be really like good about have, using this Baron, they're going to be pushing up every lane making sure that CLG are stuck at their towers in their base and defending for the next four minutes while this Baron is on them. Um, I mean, Moscow 5 are the masters of closing out games like this, of not giving you any room whatsoever to breathe, and CLG are definitely going to feel the heat shortly. You've got Darian at bot lane just pushing up, uh, Kogmore on his own in mid, and Malphite out of position is recalling back towards spawn. But Moscow 5 are really going to try and boss the opposition jungle here, steal everything they can. You did just see them pick up a dragon without any problems whatsoever, and they're going to continue to rinse and repeat, just pushing the mid, pushing the top on top of that. Here comes the mid tower, should go down in a matter of seconds. Twisted Fate and Corky both firing onto this one. Darren is going to be taking most of the uh, brunt of the damage there from the tower. In fact, the tower will not be going down, but only on 400 health. But we're going to wait for this next creep wave and then more than likely push. It may not be wise for Moscow 5 to start engaging now because I just went ahead and looked at the gold. Jax is sitting on 2,500 gold, Alex on 2,300. It might be in their best interest to go and back and pick up the items. Alex goes ahead and picks up that Rabadon's. Jax with a Rage Blade. I actually haven't seen this item combination in such a long time. This is pre uh, change Jax where they would get a uh, hot Hextech Revol Gun Blade followed by a Rage Blade. This is a. Uh, it's actually quite a very strong build. It's a ramp up build. You jump on and you keep them in place and your uh, stacks are just going to keep coming and coming and Jax is going to really benefit from both the AP, AD and attack speed of the stacks. On the other side though, Wicked picking up a Randwin's Omen. We're seeing a, a near identical build for last game. Cooldown reduction in armor. He's actually sitting on 400 armor with his W activated, which is it's just ridiculous. Yeah, that, that is going to be difficult to break through. Twisted Fate, of course, does have that Rabadon's Death Cap, though. So uh, he's going to be dishing out a fair amount of damage with his wild cards and, of course, his pick a card. Uh, you now see Moscow 5. Surprise, surprise, Diamond Prox is going to be trying to pick up this blue. He does have CLG chasing after him, though. So he's going to pull that one out slightly and uh, take it down here, giving it to Alex at the end. So nice stuff from him. I don't think that uh, CLG have got any blue since the first one in this matchup. Yeah, definitely. They were able to get maybe the first one and the second one, but um, after that, Moscow Fiber just able to control their blue blue buff every single time, and it's showing that it's affecting uh, Frogan's ability to farm. Frogan, 255 CS. It's quite high, yes, but you know he's such a monster at creep killing. You can just imagine that if he had that blue buff, you could you could just picture exactly how much more he would have. Well, a complete role reversal of that first game. Very quick, after 28 minutes 50, team has Baron pushing towards that inhibitor. And it is this time going to be Moscow 5. And we said it previously, CLG currently 2-0 up in this series. Moscow 5 simply have to win this game and the next two afterwards if they want to be crowned Grand Champions yeah. or the Medion Challenge Cup. CLG just needs to win one more game in order to win. So this really puts yeah. Moscow 5 in the back foot. But you know, maybe this is the motivation they need in order to pull out some victories. Yeah, I mean, you know, some some teams, when they're backed against the wall, crumble, and they press the self-destruct emo button, and some come out swinging. Some fight to the bitter end, and Moscow 5 are one of those teams you simply can't count out. They could definitely win the next three games. They're looking in prime position here, and it wouldn't be too surprising for me to see them take the next game as well. But uh, CLG, you, of course, are such a good team themselves. Alex has to flash away there. 
from Cogmore, who does land another ultimate right at the end. And uh, you said this yesterday about Cogmore with Riley's Crystal Scepter playing AP. It's very difficult to escape from him. Once he lands one uh, ultimate on you, suddenly three or four follow. And that's definitely reflected in Alex choosing to flash away as soon as that first ultimate landed. CLG really taking good advantage of the downtime, picking a turret, getting the gold that they desperately need to stay in the game. There's still 12,000 gold behind. It's, it's quite difficult for them to kind of get back in this position. You're right, Moscow 5 are showing their true colors now, that they're in prime position to take this game, but can they keep that up for the next few games? Only time will tell. And they, they haven't won this game yet, so you can't really call CLG out just yet. I think it could come down to some uh, mental kind of strength as well, because that first game, 75 minutes. This one's already 30 minutes 30. You're starting to get into uh, fairly serious gaming hours here. But of course, these two teams are going to put the hours and hours of practice in. But it's just going to come down to that mental strength. You can hold their concentration for longer. Currently, I have to say Moscow 5 are going to have to throw this game away if CLG come back into it. But Jax is going to be putting down some pain onto Crepo. Alistair will headbutt him away and uh, managed to pull himself back and out of contention in that team fight. But you need to be very careful because Alex is at top lane, Nocturne coming around from the backside on top of that, and uh, this top tower should be going down very, very quickly. So seven, six towers, I beg your pardon, to just the two that CLG have picked up. I bet CLG are really dying to punish Darian for his over of plays. They just don't have the ability to. I mean, look, he's just standing in front of their team, and they're like, hey, guys, come and get me almost taunting them, but they're just way too defensive, but really good poke coming out of Cogmall there, combination with the cat, the uh, cleaver coming from window. It's going to keep them in place long periods of time, but I don't think that a little bit of poke is going to change the game drastically at this point. Yeah, and with Jax, it's not just the case they don't have enough damage to maybe bring him down, it's just he's very difficult to catch up with. He has the Leap Strike and the Counter Strike on top of that, so if he's really feeling the heat, he can always stun everybody on your team if they're in close proximity. And uh, even if you do manage to, to continue chasing him after that, if uh, one of his team do come around the edge of a wall, he can just hop on over the wall. So Darian playing this one nice, he knows his strengths right now, he knows that he's a really difficult cookie to crack and he's going to be continuing to push forward. As he said, he's got the Gwinsu's Rage Blade, he has the Hextech Gunblade as well. And how much gold? He must have a fair amount. Yeah, over 2,000 gold in his back pocket. So he is really in the money this game. 10.7k accredited to his name. Corky with a Triforce Infinity. TF just went and picked up a Guardian. CLG are in really a bad spot. I mean, as long as Moscow 5 keep the Blues away from Froggen, yeah, sure, he can drop bombs, but he can't keep that up for long periods of time because even though he's got a big mana pool, that ult is going to cost more and more mana as it casts up. Eventually, it will uh, have to cast 200 mana after five subsequent casts, and it's going to be difficult for him to be able to keep up the pressure, the poke pressure, which they so desperately uh, seem to be building for, if he can't get his hands on the blue buff. Maybe we might be ha seeing him build the Fiend's Unholy Grail just to remedy the fact that he won't be getting blues if Moscow 5 can keep up the pressure. It's definitely possible. Uh, he does have the Archangel Staff and the Rylays with a Blasting Wand. And of course, the Blasting Wand is a very versatile component. can build it into a, a number of different things. But we are going to see Baron started off here from Moscow 5. Tarek did just before in uh, when you had 5v4 in mid. Oh, can take the ward coverage down. There is another ward down, though. So they know exactly how far Baron is away from death. And they're not going to be pushing in just yet. Moscow 5 seem to have given up. Uh, on that Baron as Darien will go back towards mid, Nocturnus came off as well, and now Genja is joining Darien, so we are just going to have that kind of pokey, tense atmosphere around Baron once again. Moscow 5 uh, took that first Baron, so it looks like they just want to be able to get the second one. I'm sure once they get the second one, they find themselves in a position where they're invincible and can just start pushing lanes and taking towers and start making, taking a little bit more risks. Though, I mean, look at Darian. Darian is so rich. He's got 2,700 gold. I don't know what this Null Magic Mantle will turn into. It, I've seen Wits and Mothman work. He has all really good items on Jax. Though he might go for a Guardian, he might go for a Triforce, and that Null Magic Mantle might just be a little bit of a placeholder. There are so many different item combinations that Darian can do. I mean, if you take a look at him, he's sitting on 120 of each resistances. Not only that, he's got a nice chunk of HP, and on top of that, his ult will give him a lot of armor and magic resistance. Oh, on the hunt, and the unstoppable force have both been popped here, trying to make use of 
the fact that Corky is out of position just around Dragon. But that Nocturne ultimate taking away the visibility. So two ultis used there from CLG to no avail. They didn't pick up any kills. And now Corky has been given an opportunity. Genja will be pulling himself back towards Baron. Uh, Armour Skull 5 is going to take this opportunity to try and get that Baron buff. Looks like they're at least going to start it off and, and see how this one goes down. Of course, Froggen with the ultimate is going to be able to just spam, spam, spam to his heart's content. And it has done enough to take Moscow 5 off. Here comes Jax, though, jumping on over towards Mundo. Has landed the counter-strike as well. He's going down so, so quickly, though, from Kogmore. Finally taken down. Maybe not the greatest of engages from Darien at the end of the day, but they could be picking themselves up some kill and retaliation. Here comes Alex Hitch with the twisted fate. He does manage to land a gold card on towards Wicked, but Wicked will be able to escape. Now Sivir is going to be trying to turn this one round into CLG's favour, but they don't manage to do so. So that was actually a 1 for 0 exchange in the end for CLG, but yeah. nothing to write home about for them. Uh, Darian, crazy man, crazy tactics, big plays man, kind of jumped in a little bit ahead, kind of missed, did not realise how tanky he was compared to the damage that CLG could do, and ended up having to pay for that with his life. Although, I, I really feel for Wicked here, he took a lot of damage out of the TF combo, and as a tank, he needs to be able to take that damage. But this armor build that he, he, he used in the last game when he was playing Malphite, sorry, Olaf, it, it worked because Malphite and the enemy team was not really aiming to deal damage to him. It was more aiming to deal damage to other people, and even then he bought some magic resist. Now he has a Negatron cloak, so we might see him being able to tank slightly better. We see a Spirit Massage being built on Jax and a Hex Drinker. <coughs> Excuse me. The Spirit Massage is actually quite a good item considering he's going to benefit from the Will of the Ancients that Alex is surely going to build the next few uh, minutes of the game. He's going to benefit from the Zeke's Herald and all the lifesteal that he's got. The cooldown reduction is also quite a nice stat and the uh, HP and cooldown and uh, magic boost are definitely not bad stats. So Malphite currently has 115 magic resist, and I think the big difference between this game and last one is, you know, on that Olaf, he was facing against a Malphite. You can't consistently put out a lot of magic damage, just the Unstoppable Force really coming in. Twisted Fate, though, can get the gold card off, and then wild card straight afterwards, and wild cards and gold card don't have a massive cooldown, so Malphite needs to be careful here that uh, he doesn't start to assume that he's invincible and then Twisted Fate just rolls right through him. Plus the fact you've also got Corky with the Trinity Force who's going to be doing a fair amount of magic damage on top of that with his Phosphorus Bomb and his Valkyrie too with the Missile Barrage. Let's hope this time he goes Blast Whisper. <laughs> you really think that that cost him the first game? I, I would say that contributed to some of the reasons that they lost that game. I'm not going to go ahead and blame everything on one person because that's just not fair. I, think, I definitely think the last whisper would have helped him and his team to, to puncture through some of those. Absolutely, would have helped a tremendous amount. Yeah, for sure. And uh, could uh, maybe be trying to pull his way back into this series and maybe get some more kills. I mean, currently he's on 1-1-1, one, 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 so he's not had a massive impact, but he does have a fair amount of creep score, 289 to be precise. Comparing that to Sivir, who has 256, does have the last whisper and the infinity edge. But uh, Jax is looking very strong, just caught my again as he's going to be jumping on in here. Darian without his team right next to him. Diamond Prox did throw out the Duskbringer. He also had Gosu Pepper on Tarek just behind him, but they were missing Twisted Fate. So Darian will be pulling himself back very, very quickly. And of course that Baron still stands tall. Yeah, there's a lot of pressure going up against this Baron. And Moscow 5, I'm not sure they realize it, but they, they're 15,000 gold ahead. And I, I don't know why they're not pushing this advantage because slowly, slowly, uh, CLG are going to pick up items eventually. And, you know, CLG doesn't exactly have a bad late game comp at all. They can hold their own in late game. Froggen with Kogma is such a strong late game. Sivir is actually quite a strong late game in her own. And we see Atlas Impaler being built on Nocturne. Atlas Impaler is something that we don't really see very often ever since the nerf. And I feel that it's not a strong item to get uh, over most other conventional item picks. Though Diamond with 2,700 HP is going to be able to use the crit and attack damage to his advantage. Yeah, he's also going to have armor against Sivir, but yeah, as you said, I mean, Amaz did get nerfed. It's one of those items that I used to see built up all the time when you consider that, you know, Olaf would be building that Frozen Mallet and Atmars and Paler combination quite a lot, uh, but now it just doesn't seem to, to be favored amongst a lot of the players, so it's nice to see it getting picked up again. I think I really had it last game on top of that. Darren is going to be taking down that blue. 
So yet another blue has been denied and CLG are going to be picking up the ward coverage onto around Barra. Uh, Froggen with 511 AP, I feel that this is something that should be pointed out. He did not um, go for the uh, Chalice and uh, Athenes like I expected, but absolutely it's going to be able to hurt so hard. I just want to see him hit someone with his ultimate right now. I want to see how much damage he can do. I'm just going to look for it. I'm just going to look for that. If you see him hit his ultimate, just let me know. Well, I, I don't know about you, but when this went to the 7-0, when Moscow 5 picked up that first Baron, I was really expecting a lot of action, but we may be having that right now. Twist of Fate is going to be destiny in after Darien, so the cavalry is going to be charging right behind him. This time he's not going to be on his own. Wicked on no health. He is going to go down from Corky. Are they going to pick up the second kill? On to Sivy. The answer is a no. Sivy will be pulling herself back, but this will now give Moscow 5 the opportunity to pick up Baron, which is such an important part of this stage of the game. Having said that, though, here comes Alistair with the Oracle. Uh, Twisted Fate has primed himself a gold card, so he's going to land that onto Mundo. A lot of nice damage being exchanged. Baron is going down from Nocturne, Jax, and Tarek. And mm -hmm. uh, it's possible and, Moscow uh, 5 could pick this up. Wicked was not able to use his ultimate in that team fight, and I believe. He got caught, and like when you're the tank, and you have to be scared of getting caught, it's kind of a little bit strange, especially in the situation. Uh, Ganja going for the uh, Phantom Dancer and the Infinity Edge plus Triforce. He's going to be hitting fast, he's going to be hitting hard, and he's going to be hitting constantly. Now this Baron buff, Moscow 5 seem to be in the right position to push forward and take a Tower of Inhibitor. Yeah, they do. You've got Darien at top lane starting to push that, but the more important imminent threat right now from CLG is this inhib tower, which is going to go down completely uncontested. Will they be following up onto the vulnerable Nexus? The answer, a resounding yes, the inhib has fallen. So now Moscow 5 can start to push the side lanes. Jax is doing just that right now. He's going to be jumping on towards Mundo. Cleaver has landed, and Darien is awaiting the rest of his team. So will they be picking up this second tower as well? Not too short as Corky, Tarek and Nocturne starting to pull away. In fact, never mind that. We were saying before about Darien playing man mode, really just tanking everybody. Doing the same this time. Random Zoman was popped off there from Mundo, I think it was. But we are oh! going to have a kill from Corky onto Sivir. Beautiful play there. Sivir behind the inhibitor. What about that for a snipe? Pretty fucking good. Gonna go ahead and say that. Pretty good. <laughs> that was. Just... He, he managed to dodge at the last possible second. It was literally by like fraction of a second that he managed to dodge. Well, we are going to have another engage here. Cogmore has gone down from Darien, who goes unstoppable. In fact, that was Twisted Fate, beg my pardon. They are going to go back in once again into the fray. This should be Wicked falling from Corky. Indeed, it will be. And Corky doing so, so much damage with that Phantom Dancer, Infinity Edge, and Trinity Force. Both Nexus Towers have gone down, and the Nexus itself. So congratulations to Moscow 5 for pulling this back to a 2-1 scoreline. But CLG do still have the upper hand. Yep, they just need to win one game, whereas Moscow 5 now need to win two games in a row. Moscow 5 have showed that they're definitely here to win and they're definitely here to compete. But can they keep... Okay, well we're gonna show the uh, snipe just for you guys, so... Just so you can check that out, but while they're casting, uh, they're showing that. See, uh, we're gonna have to see if Moscow 5 can keep up this momentum into the next game. Now watch as this... wow. And then there we go. He manages to dodge it. It was beautiful. All right, guys. Well, uh, we are waiting for the invites for game number three, which I'm currently in. I think we're waiting for Bass and Alex. Yeah, we are waiting for Bass and Alex to go ahead and join. Um, I'm going to quickly head to the bathroom because I've been holding this in for a long time now, and I don't want to have an accident. So I'll be right back. In the meantime. Uh... Kind of, if you like what I do, if you like my casting, if you want to talk to me, you can join me 